I think my favorite part about Sunny Boy is how it so casually drops the biggest bombshells anime can have, but he does it in such casual ways. Like, it's one thing to just casually reveal that the cats can actually talk, which, truthfully, after seeing eight episodes prior to this to Sunny Boy, not the most shocking thing given our talking dog, but still, pretty casual way to do that. And then they ease us into the revelation that, Rather than it being like alternate realities and the idea of like what these characters represent, in fact they're copies and that one of the key players in this happening was actually Mizu herself. And while yes they did also confirm that there was another reason and another part behind that, is that our boy Nagura with his teleportation, his drifting upon worlds, is it God, is it some other entity, maybe the teacher? It is revealed that they are copies, and that is major, major information. I thought there would be no topping last week, at least for a couple of episodes. I really think the Yamabiko stuff and just the idea of potentially the person responsible for all that chaos might have actually been his internal thoughts materialized into another entity, something like that. It was just such a good episode. I gushed about it last week, and that's probably going to be one of the episodes I look back at the most fond of in terms of Sunny Boy, but this episode I really think matched the wow factor of episode 8. The idea of copies is so interesting, especially considering, what was it, I think it was episode 6, give or take, when we had the revelation that they wouldn't be able to go back to the world and that there was another version of them and that they would continue on. We learned that someone like Nozomi apparently is dead in that world, but then this episode comes in and says that the copies can essentially replace. So. In theory, she could be able to replace the dead version of herself in that world, right? But the idea that the cats pretty much kept it a secret because clearly if people knew about the whole copies, she would be blamed and the cats clearly have a great relationship with her. And honestly, seeing how she pretty much acted like a cat herself and I saw some people actually thinking that she was eating cat food out of the bowl when her like mother or parental figure walked in. That was clearly ice cream. I mean, given how obsessed she is about ice cream, that was with, I mean, based on the color, based on the texture and what we saw, she was just eating like a cat, but it was a bowl of ice cream hands down. But still, like, the connection with her and those cats are, I think, really interesting, and I, they didn't need to be as, I think, emotionally engaging as they are, but I'm glad they went that direction, and it really makes sense on why these cats are so protective and secretive, even though this is some big information that probably people would want to know. And the fact that Raj of all characters figured it out, he is like truly best boy. This boy not only cracks the code and puts cats up to a lie detector test, he then sets sail One Piece style to try to find the One Piece, which to him is probably a solution so that everyone is okay and no one's gonna get hurt. But still, I mean, that's some interesting shit. I really, really enjoy it. And seeing the idea of copies really has my mind racing on where the last few episodes wants to go and who's gonna know what. The teacher is still some of the biggest and worst news yet. I mean, the fact that she ended up giving that what I thought was gonna be a toy gun slash destroy all humans laser gun ended up being something that has that same trigger sound but actually blasted a hole into the twins. Seriously, I mean, the, she's Satan herself, I'm convinced. I really feel like she's a demon walking in human clothing, but I guess we'll see where that story goes. So even without like the copies and Mizu's story and everything like that, I was really intrigued by the twins because the idea of fighting yourself is always an interesting concept for storytelling, and in a world like Sunny Boy, you can literally have that. The fact that these two are pretty much the exact same, except apparently the one thing that separates them, because they've counted millions of times, one of them has one more hair. They know the exact count, so then the question becomes, what do we do? Rip a hair out? A tr hair transplant? Someone probably has that ability. And it's interesting because clearly, like, Nagura's group is pretty much just problem solvers, right? They're just wandering from scene to scene, world to world, and solving problems. As you have characters like Raj clearly looking for a solution, as you have the teacher causing chaos. And I'm not totally sure what the end outcome is, and at this point, I'm willing to believe it's not necessarily about the mystery, more so just the characters themselves, when... If you take a step back and you look at these nine episodes and what they've represented, there's been some head scratchers, there's been some revelations, but ultimately it all boils down to how the characters are dealing with the circumstance and the stories that surround them day in and day out. And sure, I'm I'm convinced they will explain exactly, like by the end, cover up the mysteries, but I like that rather than just trying to keep you on your toes with the guessing game of who's manipulating what or this or that, rather it's 
if this happened to you, how would characters respond and how would you respond? And I think they're doing a great job with that formula. And the idea that these brothers fight day in and day out and then ultimately one ends up dead because of the laser gun, right? Or I guess the reverse gun, whatever you want to call it, really does look like a destroy all humans gun. And I was playing that remaster a couple weeks back, so it was like perfect timing for me. But the idea that once you defeat that, right, the problem you've been fighting for so long, you think the only thing you want to do is defeat your brother, your twin, your copy, your replica, whatever it is, this is your biggest obstacle. And once that's dealt with, you have nothing to live for and you kill yourself. It's an emptiness that is interesting. And the idea of the sacrifice with the cat, I'm not sure if there was a deeper meaning for that other than maybe just a barbaric symbolism. But nonetheless, it's interesting to see what the brother's storyline represented and how there's two very different outcomes. Nagra's side was going to have a pretty peaceful one, more than likely, where the teacher is, well, she's chaos walking. Sunny Boy is just one of the most wild experiences anime has to offer. And really, I think anyone's guess on how it's actually going to end a part of me wonders, because if everything's to be believed in their copies, then therefore, unless Nagara can create another this world identical to the one they came from, or at least move to another one, there's no real way for every version of them to have a happy ending. I could see an ending where potentially the copies that we're following end up just carrying on, but then certain characters like Nozomi get to go back to that this world and replace the one that died, potentially. Either way, there's definitely a lot of tension in the air, the love triangle is still there subtly, and you can definitely feel the hostility if there's some edge in the air, that's the best way to put it. If you were to raise up a block of cheese, that cheese would be sliced very easily with how much characters hate who and, you know, who wants to be with who, and there's a lot of tension, and I like that type of stuff, because even though maybe it was a little more forced in the early stages, I think they've done a great job at balancing it with the mystery and the day in and day out activities. I definitely think, as weird as it is to say, this show might have gotten more stylistically impressive as the episodes went on, especially since the second half kicked in, which felt like a season two of a concluded season one after we had that ending. And it'll be interesting because I really love the almost volcanic scenery that we had towards the end there. And I'd love to see more variety like that, because we've had a lot of beaches, we've had even some winter and jungles and things like that. I'd love to see some more chaotic, almost apocalyptic scenery, because based on the glimpses they showed us in this episode, it looks really good if we even rewind a few weeks back with the fires in the forest. There's some pretty cool demonic scenery that they've detailed, and I'd love to see more in that style because it's really impressive to me. I think this is a show that's just so fascinating to look at different responses and reactions. Saw some great opinions on last week's episode. I think this one will definitely be a head scratcher and have a lot of variety in terms of opinions as well. I'd love to know everyone saw so because this episode has a lot to interpret, especially with the copies, especially with the twin story theories if you have any of course so let me know down below leave like if you enjoyed and subscribe if you're new around here so until next time everyone please take care and have a good one